if you are coming, say hallelujah. And if you believe you are getting somewhere, shout, God loves me. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is necessary, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. We are bound to thank God for you always, brethren, as it is proper, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. That your faith grows exceedingly. We are bound to give thanks for you, brethren, as it is proper, as it is appropriate, because your faith grows always, continually. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. 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 And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now, the translation of this scripture, Have faith in God, means have the faith of God or have the God kind of faith. Have faith in God means have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Tell somebody, have the God kind of faith. Tell another person, have the God kind of faith. So Jesus answering unto them, said unto them, have the God kind of faith. There are different kinds of faith. There are different levels of faith. Now, the Bible says, and we are bound to give thanks to God always as it is appropriate because your faith exceedingly grows or your faith grows exceedingly. Now, I want you to understand faith is not static. Faith is dynamic. Either your faith is increasing or your faith is decreasing. Faith is not static. Faith is dynamic. Your faith can either be growing or your faith can either be going down. Now, Jesus said to them, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Now, what is the God kind of faith? The God kind of faith is the faith that speaks, believes in the heart, and lives it in the hands of God, and acts accordingly. Now, this was the passage of the fig tree. Jesus went closer to a fig tree, and Jesus thought the fig tree had some fruit on it. And when Jesus approached the fig tree, and he got closer to the fig tree, he saw that there was no fruit on the fig tree. So Jesus pronounced a curse on the fig tree. He said, from this day onwards, may nobody eat your fruit again. And when Jesus spoke the, those words, Jesus decided to continue what he was doing. And they went to a certain journey. And when they returned the following day, Peter was calling the attention of Jesus and said, Jesus, the fig tree you spoke against, the fig tree you cursed, the fig tree you prophesied against. Look at it. The leaves have withered. The tree itself is withering. At the time when Jesus spoke, nothing happened to the fig tree. At the time when Jesus spoke, the leaves were there. The tree was intact the same way as it was before. Nothing happened to the fig tree. But the Bible says the following day, when they returned, Peter and the other disciples, they saw that something had happened to the fig tree. But when Jesus cursed the fig tree, immediately nothing happened but the following day now immediately in the physical nothing happened but in the realms of the spirit something had taken place and something had happened now that is a god kind of faith the god kind of faith is not moved by sight the god kind of faith is not moved by what people are saying the god kind of faith is not moved by circumstances the god kind of faith speaks believes in the heart and continues the god kind of faith is the kind of faith when you believe in your heart and you speak, when you speak, you are not moved by what you see. For we walk not by sight, but by faith. So the God kind of faith, when you speak, there shall be a harvest. When you speak, tomorrow by this time, there shall be abundance. When you speak, tomorrow by this time, the provision will come. God himself will provide a lamb for the sacrifice. When you speak, you don't need to see. You don't need to see the clouds. You don't need to see rain. But you can speak and say, there shall be an abundance of rainfall 
you speak the God kind of faith does not look at circumstances. It does not look at the situation. It does not look at what people are saying. The God kind of faith, you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth. Are you here with me? This school, I will finish this school. I will finish this project. The workers the Lord has destined for me, they shall come forth. They shall come through. This project we have begun. It shall be completed. The same hand of God started this project. The same hand of God shall complete it. This school, I don't know where I'm going to get the school fees from. But I know once I have started and once God has started with me, I will finish and I will finish well. This marriage that I have married, once God helped me to marry, the children would also come forth. In the name of Jesus, this business I have started. I might have started it small, but this business will become a national attention, a national icon. In the name of Jesus, the God kind of faith believes in the heart and speaks with the mouth. And when you speak, you may not see anything. It doesn't mean nothing has happened. But in the realm of the spirit, something has taken place. And that is the God kind of faith. Great men are rising from this place. I don't need to see your bank account. I say it shall be well with you. The number of your days you will fulfill. I declare to you, the project you have begun, you will finish. He said the God kind of faith, you believe in your heart. You speak with your mouth. You believe in your heart. You speak with your mouth. That is how you became born again. The same means by which you became born again. That's how you can receive your healing. I declare I am strong. I declare I am healthy. I declare the number of my days I will fulfill. It does not look at the circumstances. It does not look at the doctor's report. It does not look at the family history. They say, as for this family, women from this family, they don't marry. Women from this family, even when they give birth to children, the children, they don't know their fathers. Listen carefully. I speak and I say, I shall marry in the will of God. I will enjoy my marriage and I will have a blissful marriage. I say it. I believe it. Therefore, I speak it. That is a God kind of it. Most of the time, believers are defeated. Not because God is not on their side. Not because God has not promised, made promises to them. But because we pray. But when we come out, we cancel our prayers. But the things we say, we do not exercise the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith. You believe in your heart and you say it. You believe in your heart. And sometimes when you are saying, people may think you are out of your mind. People may think you are out of your senses. But listen, that's the God kind of faith. I declare that a, a year by now, you will have a testimony. A testimony that will be seen by all. That is the God kind of faith. Where the money will come from, I don't know. Who will help you, I don't know. How it will happen, I don't know. But I'm operating the God kind of faith. I believe in my heart and I speak it. I declare a year by now, the congregation would have quadrupled. It is the God kind of faith. I speak it. I believe it. I declare helpers are coming from the east. Helpers are coming from the west. Helpers are coming from the north. Now the God kind of faith. I declare the enemies that have tortured your life. I declare by the end of this year, you would have had the victory over them and you would have a testimony. Your enemies shall be subdued before you. How it will happen, I do not know. But I'm operating the God kind of faith. He said, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. You see, the God kind of faith, you believe in your heart and you speak it. Are you here with me? It's not based on feelings. It's not based on family history. It is a God kind of faith. I believe in my heart and I speak with my mouth. I believe in my heart and I speak with my mouth. I don't need your apology. I don't need your input in this matter. This is what God has put in my heart. Now somebody will say, what is faith? What is faith? Faith is a supernatural force in the heart of a believer. You know, most of the time, people don't understand. There are so many definitions of faith. We say faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And by through it, the elders obtain a good report. What is faith? Now, today, I want you to understand this definition of faith. Faith is a supernatural force in the heart of a Christian which is released through the words of his mouth and it is demonstrated by his actions. Faith is a spiritual force in the heart of a Christian in the heart of a believer which is released through the words of his mouth and it is demonstrated through his actions faith is a supernatural spiritual force in the heart of a Christian he said with the heart a man believes so faith is of the heart it's not of the mind it's not of the feelings faith is of the heart so faith is a supernatural force 
in the heart of a Christian, which is released through the words of his mouth and which is demonstrated by his actions. This is faith. So faith, it means a force of conviction in your heart, persuasion in your heart, believing in your heart. It is a force. That's what the Bible says. For he is able to do far more exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work in us. It is not just the Holy Ghost power, but it is the faith power. It is the force, supernatural force in the heart of a Every believer has faith. Listen, every believer has faith. Forces are in magnitude. Forces are in degrees. We don't, listen, we have potential force. We have kinetic force. We have kinetic energy. We have force. M mass times acceleration is force. Are you here with me? Force, it is that which keep a body to move in a, a, a motion in a straight line or to, 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 to move it away from the straight line. There are different degrees of forces. Are you here with me? So there can be a force. There can be di different degree of forces. When a car is running very fast, the heavier the car, the greater the momentum. Two cars with the same velocity. The heavier, the, uh, uh, but different weight. The heavier car has greater momentum. Are you here with me? So forces are in different degrees. Forces are in different magnitude. The same way faith is in different degrees and faith is in different magnitude. But faith is a supernatural force in the heart of a Christian, in the heart of a believer, which is released through the words of his mouth. That's why I say, have the God kind of faith. Jesus spoke it and he walked away. In action, the action was, he did not cry and say, hey, this thing I'm spoken, will it happen? They may think I'm a false prophet. They may think nothing will happen. Why am I? They will laugh at me. No, Jesus operated the God kind of faith. He had a force in his heart. He believed, he spoke it. And then his action, he went away, doing business as usual. As far as he was concerned, it was done. Are you here with me? That's the God kind of faith. That's the God. Listen, forces are in degree. Faith is a supernatural force. There is everybody, all of you seated here. Listen, every one of you, you have this supernatural force in your heart. And that it says, it shall believe in your heart. Every Christian has this supernatural force called faith. Every believer, once you are born again, you have supernatural force called faith. And we say forces are in degrees. Forces are in measures. Forces are in different magnitude. So you see, somebody who is seated with you may have the same force, but a greater force. Somebody who is seated next to you may have the same force, but a smaller force. But at the end of the day, we all have the same supernatural spiritual force. It depends on how we build these forces in our heart, how we release it through the words of our mouth, and how we demonstrate it through our actions. The greater the opposition, the greater the force must be. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed. And be that cast into the sea. And he shall not doubt in his heart. But believe those things. He shall receive those things. In other words, even mountains, there are different kinds of mountains. There are small mountains. There are medium-sized mountains. And there are great mountains. He said, who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel. So there are mountains. There are medium standard mountains. And there are great mountains. In battle, there are different levels of battle. Listen, the battle you are facing today is because you are not built enough force. To overcome that battle so you must know that as a child of God the most important thing to do is to build up your faith and he says have this kind of faith the God kind of faith the God kind of faith I sense an anointing resting upon me right now the God kind of faith believes in the heart and speaks with the mouth it is the same when, when we have prophet Abu Elijah in the house. It is the same faith. When prophet is prophesying, it's the same faith he uses. When you are casting out of demon spirit, it's the same faith. You believe in your heart. You speak with your mouth. Jesus cast out demon spirit with his words. He healed the sick with his words. He performed miracles with his words. Words have the ability to change our lives. Words have the ability to change the course of direction of our lives. It is a supernatural force in the heart of a Christian which is released through the words of his mouth and is demonstrated by his actions. Supernatural force. 
and believes in his heart and shall not doubt what he believes, those things shall be done for him. Believes in his heart. The woman with the issue of blood said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And what did she do? She went and she touched it. She had the supernatural force in her heart. She spoke the word and she touched it. Faith, she demonstrated it by touching it. So you see, we can grow in our faith or we can go down in faith. Every Christian has faith. Everybody, you, every one of us, we have faith. We have faith. All of us, we have faith. It depends on what you do with your faith. Whether you go and hide your faith, whether you sleep over your faith, or whether you nurture your faith, whether you work with your faith, whether you build up your faith, whether you exercise your faith, that is what will determine whether your faith will grow or your faith will go down. Everybody has faith. Romans chapter 12 verse 3. Every Christian, you have that supernatural force in your heart. You have that supernatural force in your heart. Every Christian has faith. We don't want to use our faith. Every Christian has faith. Look at this. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. Amen. But to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every man the measure of faith. This was written to Christians. So Apostle Paul was writing to Christians. And he said, God has dealt to every man, not a measure, but the measure, the measure, the measure. When we say measure, it means something that have, can have different degrees. It means quantity. It means different, different intensity. So God has dealt with every man the measure, not a measure, the measure. So when we became Christians, we received the measure. Every Christian received the measure. When you see somebody excelling, the person did not excel to begin with. The person built his or her faith. But from the beginning, everybody receives what we call the measure. The measure. The measure. So the first level of faith is the measure of faith. Which everybody receives. When you become a Christian, God puts the supernatural force of faith in your heart. And this force of faith is called the measure. Everybody who becomes born again, God starts with the person at that same level. And it is called the measure. The measure. Everybody, the measure. It means an amount. It means a quantity. It means a degree. The measure, the amount, the quantity. So when we become Christians, God puts us, all of us, at the same measure of faith. But now, what do you do with the faith which you have received? A certain man gave a talent to his servant. And he went to a faraway country. And he came back some years or some months later. And he rendered, he came to call them to render account. One said, the pound you gave me has multiplied to be five. The other person too said, my own has become ten. Then the other person said, I know you are an austere man. You reap where you have not sown. So I was afraid of you and I went to hide my talent. Now, in other words, there are Christians who have decided they don't want to do anything with their faith. They become Christians. God has given to them the measure of faith and they have put it aside and they are living apart from the faith life. They want to depend on someone to do things for them. They want to depend on people to solve their problem for them. They, want to, they don't want to connect with God for themselves because they have thrown the measure of faith away. And there are Christians who have decided that they will multiply the measure of faith which God has given to them through hard work, through studying the word, through prayer, through, through, through stepping out to demonstrate their faith. Over many years, they have moved from one level to another. Hallelujah. So there are different levels of faith. We all start at the same level. Faith is either growing or is going down. Faith, faith can never be static. You are either growing in faith or you are growing in unbelief. You are either increasing in faith or you are increasing in unbelief. Are you here with me? So now let's look at the different levels of faith. Number one, when we start at the same measure, there is what we call little faith. Little faith. Little faith. Little faith. Little faith. Jesus said, ye men of little faith, 
For look at the birds of the air. They do not farm. They do not do any activities, but God takes care of them. He said, how much more would God not clothe you? And he said, ye men of little faith. So in other words, there is, there is what we call little faith. There are Christians who are walking by little faith. When they were in the storm, and there was a boisterous storm, and Jesus was sleeping in the boat, and they were crying. Jesus woke up and rebuked them for their little faith. He said, why did you fear? Ye men of little faith. Matthew chapter 6 verse 30. We see little faith. Little faith. Mark 8 26. We see little faith. Ye men of little faith. Ye men of little faith. Ye men of little faith. So there is what we call little faith. Little faith worries. Little faith is anxious. Little faith worries about tomorrow. Little faith worries about what will befall them. Little faith worries about God's ability to provide. Little faith. Little faith worries about God's ability to save. You are working but you are anxious. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. But for in all things, in all things, in prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. So there is little faith. Little faith. They worry about tomorrow. They don't think God can take care of them. They are anxious. So there is a level we call little faith. When you don't build up your faith, you, you have little faith. You lose your, your level and your magnitude and your degree. It goes down. So little faith. Little faith. Little faith. They don't believe that God is taking care of them. He said the number of your hairs, they are numbered. Not they are counted. They are numbered. In other words, the, where's the hair we are carrying? There's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. So the hairs are numbered. They are not counted. They are numbered. And he said God will not allow a strand of your hair to fall down without his permission. In other words, little faith doubts God's ability to sustain them, to keep them, to provide for them, to take them to the next level, to show them from the enemy. Listen, little faith is always anxious. Little faith is worried about tomorrow. Little faith is worried about God's ability to provide. Little faith. Little faith. Little faith. A lot of us Christians, we are still operating at the level of little faith. We want people to carry us on their faith. Little faith. Everybody, men of God, we also have to believe God for ourselves. We also have to exercise faith. Are you here with me? The fact that prophets can see doesn't mean he doesn't walk in faith. He has to also exercise faith for himself. He said, blessed are those who do not see, yet they believe. So even though he sees, God is using him to bless people, seeing things about people. It does not mean he too he has to exercise faith. The man of God with healing anointing must also exercise faith. Pastors must also exercise faith. So listen, everybody, from today you must tell yourself, I have the faith of God and I'm required to operate the faith of God. And God has given me faith and I'm going to work with my faith. I'm going to nurture my faith. I'm going to build up my faith. I'm going to do exploits through my faith. The level of exploits you will do is determined by the faith you have built. So little faith, that's little exploit. Little faith wins only little battles. Little faith conquers little enemies. Little faith. Little faith brings little testimonies. Little faith. Level one, little faith. Level two, we have great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Oh, the clock is not working. Why will you tell me to teach and preach and give me a clock that is not working? Even when the clock is working, sometimes you know things can go off. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. I keep saying it. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, prophet. Thank you. Amen. I don't know why they did that. You want to have an all night? Since I've been preaching, it's been. Ah! So as you preach, and you don't, the clock is not working. <laughs> Amen. Because I look at it, it's still there. I say, ah. but I've spoken a little. The time should be gone by now. It's still there. Number two, great faith. Great faith. Look at what great faith does. Great faith. Great faith. Matthew chapter 8 verse 10. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. 
And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Great faith. Great faith. Now this was about the centurion. His most favorite servant was sick. And he went to call Jesus to come and heal him. And when Jesus was coming, he said, Lord Jesus, you don't need to come. Only speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, what a man with great faith. Great faith speaks the word and believes the word. Great faith believes in the ability of God that backs his word. Because the heavens and the earth shall pass away. His word will never pass away. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And all things were made by him. And in the beginning he was with the father. And without him was not anything made that was made. And the word became flesh. So great faith believes in the ability of the word. Great faith will speak to the mountain. And say you this mountain be leveled. You this mountain be cleared off my path. Great faith believes in the ability of the word. He said, you have great faith. He said, don't come to my house. Just speak the word. Christians who believe in the power of the word, they, they, are, they are written by great faith. He said, speak your word only. Speak your word only. Because he knows when the word is spoken, angels will back the word. He said, speak your word only. The authority of heaven will support the word. It is called great faith. Great faith. Don't, don't come to my house. Pray over the handkerchief. Give it to me. Don't come to my house. Pray over the phone and my servant will be healed. Pray over the phone and I'll have a miracle and I'll have a testimony. It is called great faith. It is called great faith. It is called great faith. Elijah said, go and wash yourself seven times in the river Jordan. Naaman wanted to doubt. The little girl said, this thing is small. Go and just do it. He said, go, go and wash yourself. Go, it is well with you. you. You are blessed. All things will work for your good great faith. So there's little faith and there's great faith. Great faith believes in the spoken word. The spoken word. The spoken word. Speak to the dry bones. Great faith. Speak to the mountain. It shall clear. Great faith. There's also another passage about great faith. In Matthew chapter 15 verse 28. This was a woman. You know sometimes when we go through challenges Sometimes when people make mockery of us, we get offended. We get angry. We tell ourselves, take your blessing. Take your prophetic gift. Take your miracle. Take your chair. Take it. I'm tired of you. This woman wanted deliverance for the daughter. And she came to Jesus. She heard about Jesus. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing. So she heard about Jesus. So she decided to go and see Jesus. And said, my daughter is often afflicted by demon spirit. Lord Jesus, come and heal my daughter. I need healing for my daughter. Great faith. The disciples were driving the woman away. The woman was a Gentile. She was not qualified for the blessing. You will receive a blessing you are not qualified for. You will receive promotion you are not qualified for. You will receive favor you are not qualified for. You will receive an endorsement you are not qualified for. You receive a contract you are not qualified for. Through great faith. Through great faith. This woman was an unbeliever. This woman was a Gentile. And now this woman heard about Jesus. And she came to Jesus. Said my daughter was ill. My daughter was sick. Demon spirits were afflicting my daughter. And the disciples said go away. Peter the apostle said go away. Who are you? You are disturbing us. We don't want your kind in our midst. We are protecting the Messiah. It's all we have. It is through him we get gifts. It is through him when we get to the marketplace, they give us bread. When we follow him, come on, go away. You are disturbing us. But the woman did not go away. She persisted. And she got the attention of Jesus. And Jesus said, woman, I have not been sent to your kind. I have not been sent to your caliber. I have not been sent to people like your type, like your kind. I have been sent to the people of Israel. And now besides... It is not proper for dogs to eat the bread of the children. In other words, Jesus was even calling the woman a dog. She wanted a miracle. They were calling her a dog. And the woman said, Lord Jesus, you know something? I don't want the bread. Take the bread, but give me the crumbs. 
Give me the ones that when it falls on the ground, the dogs will also eat. Yes, I accept I'm a dog. And dogs also eat from the table. Even if they don't eat from what is on the table, they eat from what falls on the ground after the, the, the sons have eaten. So you give me the crumbs because the same anointing in the bread is the same anointing in the crumbs. If they poison your food and you eat your food and God does not help you and you if the food can kill you, if your dog also eats the one that drops on the floor, it can kill the same dog. So the same healing power in the bread is the same healing power in the crumbs. So you take the bread but give me the crumbs. I want my child to be healed. Yes, I might have been called a dog but I can have the testimony by eating the crumbs. And Jesus said, wow. What a faith. Calling you a dog did not stop you. Telling you you don't qualify that did not stop you. My people sacking you did not stop you. Preaching you did not move you out. Doing some things against you did not move you out. Oh, what a faith. This is called great faith. Go, your daughter is healed this very moment. And the woman went. This is called great faith. Great faith. Great faith breaks protocols. Great faith takes what they say you don't qualify for. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Even if you've been rejected, through great faith, you shall be endorsed. You shall be accepted. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. So we have little faith. We have great faith. And we have exceedingly growing faith. Exceedingly growing faith. Second Thessalonians 1.3 he said, we are bound to give God thanks for you. For your faith groweth exceedingly. The most miserable thing that can happen to a child of God is to be losing your faith. It's for your faith to be going down. That's why Jesus prayed for Peter. He said that your faith will not fail. Because when your faith fails, you don't have anything to have in the whole kingdom. When even if you're backsliding and your faith has not failed, God will use you again. Even if you have lost something and your faith has not been failed, you will have restoration. That's why Jesus prayed for Peter. And he said, Peter, Simon Peter, Satan have desired to have you sifted as wheat. Siniazo, to overthrow your faith. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Tonight, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Wherever you find yourself, be it in your home, be it in your marriage, be it in your academics, be it in the, your finances, and you want to give up, you're about to give up. Siniazo is hitting you on the left. Siniazo is hitting you on the right. They are trying your faith. They want to overthrow your faith. You are asking God, this is not what you showed to me. I thought by now I should be here. I thought by now I should have this. It's as if things have gone down. It's as if I've lost everything. It's as if my favorite friends have abandoned me. They've forsaken me. It's as if nothing is happening. Yes, nothing may be happening around you, but the most important thing, if you don't lose your faith in God, you will have everything restored back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. If there is anything you must work at and you must protect and you must build, you must build your faith in God and his word. You must make sure nothing will destroy your faith. You must nurture your faith. You must service your faith and nothing is impossible. He is able to do far more exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask according to the power that is at work in us the force of faith that is at work in us the measure of our faith will determine the measure to which we will receive for it shall be done unto you according to your faith strong faith strong faith romans chapter 4 verse 17 i'm closing with this strong faith Strong faith. Strong faith. Strong faith. So we have weak faith and we have strong faith. We have little faith. We have great faith. We have a steadily growing faith. We have strong faith. We have weak faith. Let me tell you something about strong faith. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 17. He said, according as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom him who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Praise God. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. He said, who against hope believed in hope? Look at our mentor, our role model, Abraham. He said, he called the things that be not as though they were. Now look at the characteristics of strong faith. Strong faith 
cause the things that be not as though they were. Strong faith cause the things that be not as though they were. When strong faith sees a forest, sees a wilderness, he said, this is a forest. When, that's what he said, have the God kind of faith. What is the God kind of faith? He caused the things that be not as though they were. So when he saw a shepherd boy, he called him a king. When he saw a failure like Gideon, he called him mighty man of valor. When he saw a pampered boy called Joseph, he said, you are a prime minister. You know, strong faith caused the things that be not as though they were. Look at it, verse 18. Strong hope, not strong faith, believes against hope. In other words, there is nothing to hold on to. He said, who against hope, believed in hope. Against hope means there is no sign of possibility. There is no sign of life. Your body was dead. Your wife's womb shut. Old woman, strong faith, believes against hope. Doctor says there is no hope. He will die. Strong faith believes in hope against hope. The economy says the world will sink. Strong faith believes that we will come out and will come over. The economy says we, can, we will go bankrupt. Strong faith says no. God will provide for himself a lamb for the sacrifice. It is God. He calls the things that be not as though. And he hopes against hope. Look at it. Strong faith does not consider the weaknesses. He considered not his own body which was now dead. Neither the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Strong faith does not consider the things that are against you. He said, if men gather together against you, he said, who, who can gather against you if the Lord be for you? So strong faith does not consider the things that are against I didn't go to school. My father died early. Nobody took care of me. I don't have friends. I don't have anybody in government. Listen, strong faith does not look at those things. Strong faith does not look at those things. Look at strong faith. He did not consider his own body, which was dead, when it was 100 years. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. So strong faith caused the things that be not as though they were. Strong faith will hope against hope. Strong faith does not consider your body, your weaknesses, your limitation, your limited funds, your limited resources, the things you don't consider it. Look at this one. I like this one. He staggered not. Strong faith does not stagger. When they say staggering, when you drink alcohol, and you are walking easy, easy, don't stagger. Easy, easy, staggering. Are you, are you here with me? Waving strong faith does not stagger. Would God do it today? Would God not do it? What if God disappoints? You can't put all your eggs in one basket. Let me do this. In fact, if, if, if no, 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 strong faith does not stagger, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Now, strong faith also gives God glory before the miracle happens. Father, I thank you for champions in the house. I thank you for giving the land of Kolegono to us. I thank you for bringing us helpers. I thank you for supplying all our needs. Lord, I give you praise. One day I lifted up my hands and I was thanking people. We were going for a crusade. We were going for an outreach. We had three buses. We were going and my pastors came to me and they said, Apostle, let's cancel it. Everything is falling apart. I said, no, nothing is falling apart. And I laid hands and I spoke in tongues and I lifted up my hands and I said, Father Lord, I thank you for a successful crusade. I thank you for the souls that I won. I thank you for the sick that have been healed. I give you praise. I thank you for the instrumentalists who have come. I thank you for everything. Now listen carefully. In that crusade, in that outreach, we got everything we needed. The bus was full. We got a video person in to cover how did it happen they all came to tell me cancel it it won't happen and i said no and i started giving thanks to god one day i was giving thanks to god about what god has done which was not obvious and somebody told me uh, they said peter in america this is called madness it is madness to human beings but in the kingdom of god it is called strong faith when you wake up, thank God for your husband. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for the children. Thank God for the business. Thank God for the contract. Thank God for bringing right men and right women into your life. Thank him. That is called strong faith. Let's be on our feet. Strong faith. Thank God. When God gives you promises, thank him for the promises. Lift up your hands and thank him. Give him praise. How he would do it, Pastor Mito, I don't know. I don't know. 
who he will use. I don't know. But all I know is that there shall be no cloud. There shall be no thundering. There shall be no lightning. But there shall be rainfall. How it will happen, I don't know. Strong faith gives God praise. Give God glory. I give God praise. I give God glory. Cornerstone is expanding on the left. It's expanding on the right. It's expanding upward. And I thank God our sons and daughters are coming to us. It is called strong faith. Strong faith gives glory to God. I don't know who God will use. But I thank God that my children will be fed. I thank God that I shall not lose this battle. Strong faith gives God glory. Lift up your hands and just thank God. Thank him. Thank him for the things you have been praying about. Move to thanksgiving. His target not at the promises of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that he who has promised is also able to do strong faith has persuasion that he who has promised <laughs> he's also able to do he who has promised is also able to do it is called strong faith he who has promised he who has promised 50,000 he who has promised is also able to do over 5,000 he who has promised is also able to do now your business you have started is becoming a global icon he who has promised is also able to do Listen, let me see men and women in the house ready to give God praise. Lift up both hands and give God praise. Strong faith gives God praise. Doors have been opened. Doors are open for you. Traveling opportunities. Yes, restoration. He's faithful. He's forever. He's faithfulness is forevermore. Listen, listen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to hear these words over and over again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Tell somebody hearing and hearing. Say hearing and hearing. You know, that's why every time God comes, I'll do this and this in your life. I'll do this and this in your life. Because faith comes when you hear and hear. When you hear and hear. When you hear and hear. How do you build your faith? When you hear and hear. When you exercise that faith. When you put into action. Go out, lay hands on the sick. Go out, cast out that devil. Take the initial step. Leave God to do his part. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Listen, lift up your hands. You are a mechanic. Get ready to be. An owner of a garage. Get ready to import and export cars. Get ready. You a student. Get ready to be a vice chancellor. You work in the hospital. Get ready to be an owner of a hospital. Ah, lift up your hands. Strong faith gives glory to God. Gives glory to God. Being fully persuaded. Strong faith. Don't look at where you are coming from. Don't look at who gave birth to you. Don't look at the past and your mistakes. Strong faith says, Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. You have done it far more exceedingly. Abundantly above all that I have. Strong faith. Give glory to God. Speak out. Speak out. Speak out. The destiny helper you need is coming your way. Amen. Sing it and speak out. gives praise to God. You give glory to God for what he has said. Even against hope, against hope, against hope. Sing and play like you mean it. of God into your life yes, and give God glory, give him praise.